Hello aspirants, looking at current affairs for 9th Jan 2017. The news items that we have picked up from the Hindu are these 12. We will look at them in detail. The first one, fuel outlets to stop accepting cards. So this is All India Petroleum Dealers Association which has announced that all petrol pumps under it would no longer accept credit and debit cards. So petrol stations had become the prominent points where POS, point of sale machines were used to make transactions, digital transactions. So there was another concern of it being hazardous to be using these POS machines near petrol pumps with safety concern. But then presently they have refused to accept debit and credit cards because the banks have now said that with effect from 9 Gen as per RBI circular they can charge MDR merchant discount rate on credit card and debit card transactions at 1% and between 025 to 1% respectively for credit and debit cards. So this charge cannot be levied on the customers. It cannot be passed on to the customers. This has been clarified by the RBI in its circular post demonetization. So now the question arises that who will pay this charge? So the petrol pumps say that we have very little margin and we cannot afford to pay this MDR costs. So the government has now clarified too that this is an arrangement MDR has to be paid by between the arrangement has to be made between the banks and the oil marketing companies. Neither the petrol pumps nor the customers need to worry about this payment. So MDR merchant discount rate is the transaction charges because banks when an online transaction is made the banks have to make those arrangements. So in that case they charge this rate. So MDR is the transaction fee charged in this. The next news item is new ginger species with medicinal properties found in Andaman. So botanical survey of Indian scientists have found a new species of zingiber which is commonly referred to as ginger from Andaman and Nicobar Island. So this is called zingiber pseudosquarosum. So this is a new species having different features, morphological features, the appearance is different. It has these stem are prominently red in color, they are fresh juice which is extracted from this the roots tuberous roots of this ginger they are said to have medicinal properties they can be used to treat abdominal pain pain in the stomach and also for treating worms antihelminthic troubles can also be cured by this so this has been claimed and has been you know to some extent approved by the scientists as well so these are found in andaman and nicobar islands so this Tribals here are also PVTGs, means particularly vulnerable tribal groups. So what are these PVTGs also we will see. This is ginger. Particularly vulnerable tribal groups are a group, are communities within the scheduled tribes. So even within scheduled tribes there is inequality in the rate of development. So to have special focus on these vulnerable tribal groups, this, in, this initiative was taken. So earlier they were called primitive tribal groups, later they were renamed as particularly vulnerable <coughs> tribal groups in 2006. So this was on the recommendation of Debhar Commission of 1960s when it said, he said that within the scheduled tribes the subcategory is required for prominent attention being given to them so that primitive tribal groups was formed. So the features or characteristics which will acquire, make a tribal group acquire this status is that they are in pre-agricultural system of existence means they are not even undertaking agriculture but pre-agricultural means rearing animals or some such in activities food gathering etc which they indulge in so they are practicing hunting and gathering then zero or negative population growth so there is very low population growth or even population is declining extremely low levels of literacy in comparison with other tribal groups so if they fulfill any one of the following criteria they can be called primitive tribal groups now particularly vulnerable tribal groups so there are 75 such groups which have been identified the last one added to this was maram from manipur in 1993-94 post then no new group has been added to this and many from andaman and nicobar islands many tribal communities are under pvtg so these are great andamanis jaravas unjis sentinelis and shompens they are all particularly vulnerable tribal groups. So this is Andaman and Nicobar Islands. You can see even map based questions are asked quite often here. The 10 degree channel separating Andaman and Nicobar group of islands. Then this is the Duncan passage between little Andaman and this is 
North Andaman, Middle Andaman, and South Andaman, and then this is Little Andaman. So this is the Duncan Passage here. You can see. So when the Nicobar Islands is Kar Nicobar Island, Sombrero Channel here, you can see. And this is Little Nicobar and Great Nicobar Island. Now Indira Point is the southernmost tip here. You can see Sri Lanka and the Rameshwaram Channel here, which is seen. The tribal communities of Andaman and Nicobar Islands, which are there. So there are Negrito tribes. So these Negrito tribes are Great Andamanese, Onjes, Jaravas, and Sentinelis. So they have these Negrito features. So these Great Andamanese, they have been 99% wiped out since the British first colonized these islands. So they have suffered the most because of contact from outsiders and they have been eliminated. Onjes are these uh, considered forests, their homes, they uh, indulge in po poaching and even logging. The woods are cut and logging is done. So they have settled down and they are dependent on food handouts on the people also. They have contact with the people as such, outside people as well. Jaravas, so they have also had peaceful contact since, since the last few years only. So they are there again in Andaman Islands. They have been suffered because of they have suffered because of tsunami as well and they also depend on hunting, gathering and fishing. Sentinelese, this is the most isolated of all the tribes. They have had no peaceful contact with outsiders. They fire warning arrows as soon as anyone approaches near them. So even clicking them is very difficult. So this is Sentinelese. Their population is very low. The population is in few hundreds or even in two digits that are left of these tribal communities. Then the Nicobar Islands has Mongoloid tribes. So these are Negrito tribes and here you have Mongolite tribes. So Mongolite is the Asian feature, Central Asian feature. Negrito is African features. So Mongolite tribes here are Shompen and Nicobaris. So they are very few in number. Shompens are very very few. The relatively isolated tribe of Great Nicobar Islands. They are again hunter gatherers. And Nicobaris are the tribe which have undertaken horticulture. They have many have converted to Christianity and have assimilated into the communities around him. So this is Nicobaris. <coughs> the next news item is come April, Aadhaar is must for MGNREGS work. So this is Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme. So NREGA Act was passed in 2005. So under this, any adult who is willing to do unskilled manual work at a minimum wage is decided on this and they will be ensured so it is right to work that unskilled work would be guaranteed to them so that is employment guarantee within 15 days of applying they should be provided with work and if that is not provided with then there is an unemployment allowance which they would receive so these are the provisions major provisions under NREG act of 2005 it was renamed after Mahatma Gandhi in 2009 so it became MGNREG you know so presently the news is that from April 1 onwards, MG and REGA work would be linked to Aadhaar. So if you have an Aadhaar card, only then you will be allowed to get subsidies under this MG and REGS. So this, till that time you can have other you know, instruments of uh, identity like ration card, driving license, voter ID card or Kisan passbook with photo, job cards etc can be issued in such cases if you provide all this. But then from April 1 onwards, there is a mandate that Section 7 of Aadhaar Targeted Delivery of Subsidies, Benefits and Other Services Act, which was passed as a money bill in 2016 and resulted in quite a controversy too. The Section 7 of this mandates that when government gives subsidies, benefit of or services from the Consolidated Fund of India, then individual can be asked to undergo authentication through possession of Aadhaar. So Aadhaar in some way has become mandatory in this case. So this is the basis on which GNRE GA will be mandated to have Aadhaar now. So this is regarding Aadhaar 2. It's a 12 digit unique identification number issued by the government of India when it was announced under the UIDAI. So unique identification authority of India. So it did not have any statutory status as well because it was set up under the planning commission. So now with an act, it becomes a statutory body too. Plus Aadhaar also gets statutory status. It's mandated under the law and can be made applicable to the population. 
but of course since it was passed as a money bill means rajya sabha has no say in it and in lok sabha too the government has the majority so it could easily be passed so generally the bills get stuck in rajya sabha where oppositions have a major say but in case of money bills rajya sabha has no major power it has to return accept reject or return the bill within 14 days even if it rejects it or passes any amendments to it they have no weightage if the lok sabha wants to pass the bill as it had passed so that is there so this is regarding aadhar also and why aadhar is also important so aadhar now has got the statutory status too so it will help in direct benefit transfer because aadhar number once linked to the bank accounts then governments can directly pass on the subsidies into these bank accounts so it will help in direct benefit transfer schemes been implemented so mgnre ga2 once aadhar linkage happens then the wages can directly be passed on transferred to the accounts of the workers so it will help in eliminating corruption as well and it will help facilitate even digital economy or financial inclusion people coming into the banking system too so that has its benefits so this is regarding aadhar so it has been given a statutory status now so of course with controversy there were suggestions which had come forth regarding aadhar bill of 2016 so there were concerns about privacy that if there are any loopholes and aadhar if it is made mandatory to the entire for the entire population and if any privacy concern emerges then how will that be tackled but then the government finance minister arun jetly said that privacy is not a fundamental right of the people so there can be laws which can ask for the information to be put in the public domain so whatever will be the reasons here to make such statements but yes privacy concern if this whether this data would be falling in the wrong hands or not so those are also concerns here so block sale of database of individuals should be there then another suggestion made by jairam ramesh who is a congress person was prevent disclosure of demographic information in the interest of national security so this is loosely defined that demographic information can be disclosed but then in national interest but how is that in national interest so that is a top provision which has to be clarified so this is there in the aadhar act provide for aggrieved citizens individuals to approach courts directly rather than through uidai so the act says that individuals can approach courts only through uidai first here and then they can go to the courts so this provision was you know uh, asked to be modified then clarify that benefits cannot be denied to those who don't have a aadhar number it means if a person has no aadhar number he would get no benefits so that should not be the case so this should be this should be clearly mentioned in the act so this was also a demand made so this is regarding the aadhar act passed as a money bill under article 110 of the constitution so then the rajya sabha has no say so this is regarding a money bill whether the bill was actually a money bill because if it would have been a money bill then there would be no controversy but aadhar act is not basically regarding money bill because what is a money bill is if it is dealing with provisions only provisions so it says <coughs> money bills are those bills which contain only provisions dealing with all or any of the matters specified so imposition abolition alteration of any tax borrowing of money or giving of guarantee by the government custody of consolidated fund of india or other funds as such so all these appropriation of money out of consolidated fund of india so if this is a bill which is majorly dealing with these aspects declaring of expense or expenditure charged on consolidated fund of india receipt of money on account of consolidated fund of india so all these aspects make a bill a money bill if even if one of them is satisfied but it should contain only provisions dealing with such matters but that is not the case here that's why it is not a money bill so the decision whether a bill is a money bill or not is of the speaker and speaker is from the ruling political party so his decision is final and cannot be challenged in the court of law too. so that is the case rajya sabha has limited powers lok sabha has supreme power government has majority in lok sabha so as a money bill it can easily be passed but this is a wrong precedent being set of bypassing opposition then this is regarding direct benefit transfer so direct benefit transfer for lpg we are already seeing the dbtl which has been quite successful so that is the pahal scheme to for lpg 
then the ration cards can also be made you know uh, bogus ration cards can also be eliminated kerosene subsidy by direct benefit transfer can be provided mgnre gs which we just saw through direct benefit transfer scholarships can be provided subsidies here pensions can be provided through this dbt scheme so this is there this has been implemented in various states as well so you can see puducherry haryana jharkhand they are implementing this teachers posts are provided through aadhar so this identification of duplicate enrollment of students is also done through this aadhar direct benefit transfer so aadhar being used basically scholarships also are provided through dbt the next news item is psc to quiz rbi governor officials so public accounts committee which is the committee which looks into the audits and accounts of the reports submitted by uh, audits and accounts basically are the reports submitted by the cat comptroller and auditor general of india so this is uh, psc has cag as the friend philosopher and guide so this public accounts committee is generally headed by leader of the opposition so here it's the congress leader kv thomas who is heading this committee and they have sent a questionnaire to the rbi governor urjit patel and other finance related officials like the finance secretary economic affairs secretary so there will be a meeting in which they would come together and meet on january 20 and the provision is regarding scrutinizing the reports of the cat so basically they can take no more note of any matter to so in this case they are looking into the demonetization aspect and how they are having many questions about how many people were involved in this decision making so is there a, a law which can restrict people to access their own money how much money has come back into the banks after demonetization how much of black money has been extinguished what was the need for demonetization if counterfeit currency estimates were not available and did not necessitate any such initiative if there is a high cash to gdp ratio then countries like japan also have a very high cash to gdp ratio much higher than india too but they do not undertake demonetization then what is the justification for this so all those questions which the opposition had which they were not able to ask to the government in the legislature because the parliament functioning was stalled these are been put forth they have been written down and sent as questionnaire to rbi governor and the finance secretary and economic affairs secretary and their answers in writing as well as subsequent questions which may come up in this meeting has to be answered by them to psc so this is the news so again when this happens we'll again hear about it in news the next news item is supreme court wants paper trial in evm for fair polls So presently we have electronic voting machines which are used so you press a button and your vote is registered but then because earlier it was the ballot paper so ballot paper has been replaced by evm so to be assured that the button which you pressed is the right button and you voted the party to which you plan to vote there is a need for a verification here so that is through this paper print out which comes out after the evm so the evm machine is connected to this vvpt VVPAT voter verifiable paper audit trail which is conducted so there is a separate machine so this print slip which comes out is stored it's not given to the voter but it is stored with the authorities so this is voter can also verify and there is a complete trail which is there of the votes which have been registered so at any later point of time if audit is required to be done of votes then this paper audit trail can be done so the supreme court had asked the election commission of india to make this compulsory in the 2014 general elections too but then the election commission said that it can only be introduced in a phased manner so it cannot be introduced all together with all the evms in the country so presently to supreme court has reiterated its stand and says that vvpat should be used for 100% transparency in elections so this is the point because this print out which comes out paper ballot is has the serial number the name of the candidate for whom the voting took place the poll symbol for which the voter had voted so this all comes out in this print so this in 2013 itself the supreme court have was petitioned on this then that the election commission be asked to introduce paper trail in evm so presently two assembly polls are being held so we'll see how the election commission goes ahead with this and whether vvpat system is used or not so here it is regarding this 
So of course it will be an expenditure by the election commission too to employ VAT systems throughout. So it can that's why it said that it can only be done in a phased manner. The next news item is road safety week begins. So it is the 20th road safety week which is held each year in January. So this 20th road safety week has its theme as accident is painful, safety is gainful. So highest road accidents in the world occur in India. Around 11% of global road accident deaths are in India. So it's a huge fatality in India which is seen. So accidents do occur but fatalities in accidents are very high in India. So this is among the highest in the world. So for road safety, four E's have been proposed. One is engineering, means better engineering of roads. Education, educating people about road safety. Equipment, the effective equipments like, you know, the balloons which emerge or some you know, protections which can be provided in the vehicles. And finally, enforcement. The law enforcement should be effective. So this will ensure that road safety is upheld. Then the next news item is army enthused by new indigenous artillery gun. So this is attacks advanced towed artillery gun system which has been developed by DRDO in co collaboration with the private sector. So Mahindra and even Tata Power, these groups, Kalyani group are involved, Bharat Forge Limited along with even the OFB ordinance board, factory board, they all together have developed, are developing this advanced towed artillery gun system. So army has also approved it and said that this heavy artillery gun system would be beneficial for it. So this is in use. It's a artillery gun which can be used in a, which has been developed in a mission mode for army artillery modernization. So it will be inducted in the army around 2022-2024. So there will be development, then trials taking, trials taking place and finally it would be inducted. So this is a tax. Then the next news item is a promise to hires of indentured laborers. So indentured laborers which are present in various countries in the world. So we have Suriname, Guyana in South America where indentured laborers live. Even in African countries like, uh, like South Africa, even Mauritius which is not in African continent but is an island nation. Here too we see that there are many indentured laborers who settled here. Fiji, Trinidad and Tobago, these island nations too are having Indian indentured laborers who had settled there and now their generations, down the line generations are also present here. But then they do not have effective documents in place. So the documents could not be provided by them. That is the reason why this PIOs, they are called persons of Indian origin, they are not able to get the OCI card. So overseas citizen of India card is provided but they because of lack of documents are not being able to avail this. So Prime Minister has now wavered this provision and has ensured that they would be provided OCI cards. So this OCI cards difficulty is because they do not have the proper documents of listing of the entire family tree of since when they have been settled here. So they are called Girmit. So Girmit is a term which is a corrupt form of the English work agreement. So Mahatma Gandhi himself also called himself as the first Girmit when he was in South Africa. So even the present Prime Minister has said that all Girmitya countries should be aware that we will ensure that OCI cards are provided to all POIs who want to avail it. So he has also ensured them assistance. So this is regarding PIO and OCI. So PIO is a person of Indian origin. So he is basically a foreign citizen. But PIO status is also not given to few countries. So that is Pakistan, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, China, Nepal, Bhutan, Sri Lanka and Iran. So they are not given PIO status. So foreign citizen who is one of the parents, grandparents or great grandparents. So it is traced up to three generations. Was born as a permanent resident of India. Then that person is a PIO. So even the spouse of such a citizen or a PIO is also a PIO. Then benefits which are provided to them is that they do not require a visa when they are visiting India for a short time frame for a period of 15 years from the date of issue of this PIO card. Then they are exempted from registration as foreign, you know, foreign nationals who are visiting the country. So their stay should not exceed more than 180 days. So this is 6 months. So if they are staying for 6 months, 
then they do not need to register as such too. Then all future benefits would be exempted, that would be exempted to NRI. So PIO card holders are also exempted. So they have the status as good as an NRI in terms of financial, economic and education benefits. So those are PIOs. Then what are OCIs? OCI is Overseas Citizen of India. So this is stopping short of granting dual citizenship. So foreign national who is eligible to become a citizen of India can acquire an OCI status also. So this is done through registration. So even minor children of such people are also eligible. But then of course countries, two countries are exempted, excluded. One is Pakistan and Bangladesh. So if a person is a citizen of Pakistan or Bangladesh, he cannot be given the status of OCI. So here also again lifelong visa is provided to them without any limit. They are exempted from police reporting too. Then they have all the rights which are granted to NRIs in terms of economic, financial and educational fields. They can have all the pro uh, rights granted except the right to acquire agricultural land. So except that they can indulge in all other economic activities in the country. So overseas citizens of India is of recent origin and has much more benefits than PIO. So there is a demand to merge these two, that PIO OCIs should be merged but still action has not taken place on this though initiatives have been taken by the government. Then looking at these other countries too which have been named, Mauritius lies here. So this is the African continent, this is Madagascar island in Africa, Mauritius lies here. Seychelles is another group of islands in Indian Ocean. So clearer picture is shown here too. So this is Lakshadweep islands, below it is Maldives, below it is Chagos group of islands, also called BIOT, British Indian Ocean Territory. So these are still part of UK. Then this was Mauritius, Seychelles and Mauritius. So Mauritius lies here, Seychelles above it, Lakshadweep, Maldives and Chagos Island. So this is Madagascar too. So you can see the various island nations which you should know about at least the location of these island nations. Then the next news item is illegal recruitment will be done away with Prime Minister. So this is the government has made clear that any illegal recruitment which takes place majorly in Western Asian countries so that will be effectively tackled by the government. They have also initiated online portals like e-migrate and mother platforms to address any grievances of migrant workers. So in West Asian countries generally they face many, many difficulties. Even the Nitakat system which is there in place in these West Asian countries under which the passport of a migrant worker can be taken over by the owner, by the employer. So employer, it is called modern slavery too because without your passport you cannot move out of the country. So you are dependent on an employer. So you cannot leave the job too without the consent of your employer. So basically the requirement is that only that in under Nitakat system if you want to switch then the employer permission is required. So without the employer's permission, you cannot switch, you cannot leave the country. So those Nidakat laws are also now being diluted. So that is an initiative in this direction. But the Indian government is also up with all initiatives in place to make sure that the illegal recruitments which take place and migrants suffering in West Asian countries is reduced. So these are the two platforms, e-migrate and Madad. Then the next news item is trading the path to quick payments. So trades, that is trade receivables discounting system. So what are trade receivables? Trade receivables are what you are expected to receive as payment when you are trading. When you are selling a commodity, the receivables, what you will get in return, that is called receivable in lieu of the trade. So these trade receivables discounting system has been approved by the RBI. So this is said to be benefiting MSMEs micro, small and medium enterprises because these micro, small and medium enterprises sell their commodities, trading is done to larger companies. So these larger companies buy from MSMEs but then in payment which is due to them, they do a lot of deals. So they are, the MSMEs being small firms, they are helpless and big corporates have all the leeway and they delay the payment. So to ensure that this delayed payment does not make the MSMEs suffer but they benefit out of it, they have, the RBI has in, allowed having trades, that is trade receivables discounting system. 
so these trade receivables can be discounted on and this will make sure because the investor would also now be not having a stake in msme but now it has shifted to the larger corporate so larger corporates discount bill will be there with this investor so that would be more assured bill because big investors big companies can easily repay also and also the big companies would have the pressure on them to repay now which was not there earlier under directly under ms msmes so this is the trade system trade receivables discounting system so three applicants have been given nod in principle nod by rbi in 2015 so this trades will start but it does not allow any credit risk so if there is any risk that credit has been taken so that aspect is not allowed trade has already taken place and the payments are due only those aspects are allowed so those are called trade receivables so these are the benefits from all sides under trade receivables discounting system that msmes get funding as well the investors get better better stake also and better you know insurer that the money would be returned so those aspects are the benefits here the next news item is mini grids can power rural economic activity so the ministry of new and renewable energy has defined a mini grid so it's a power system off grid power system with generation capacity between 10 kilowatts to 500 kilowatts so such mini grids if they are established in rural areas they can help in the process of even providing power supply especially for expanding the mobile telephone networks across the country so that and they can later be connected to the national grid as well the last news item is anti avoidance tax rule to kick in from april 2017 so this is gar general anti avoidance rules which were planned to be initiated from 2014 but they were deferred for 2 years and now they will plan they are plans to implement it from april 1 2017 so these were first announced in the budget speech of then finance minister pranab mukherjee who is now the president of india so in his 2012 13 budget speech he had announced that gar would be introduced to check tax evasion and avoidance so tax evasion means illegal activity means tax is evaded you are the tax is due but the person is not paying the tax that is an illegal activity but tax avoidance is not illegal a person would make provisions in such a way that tax is not liable on him and he is avoiding the tax so presently this gar rules are anti avoidance rules that a person is not able to even avoid taxation so this is applicable to larger corporate houses because the activities which they undertake even sale of we have seen many such cases like vodafone case and other cases which came to the fore in which sales were done to dummy companies in tax havens too so that no tax capital gains tax is not liable on them so they can easily avoid the taxes which they would have to pay to india so all such action, you know actions which are taken which are just seen to be done to avoid taxes they would not be allowed so that is gar general anti avoidance rules which will be coming into effect so there are fears that government will use this to target p notes also so what are these p notes we'll look into that also so government can prospectively tax overseas deals with involving local assets so that's what we wanted that if there is a deal taking place overseas then india has no jurisdiction but if there are local assets involved then government can tax them so this is general anti avoidance rules so p notes what are these p notes also called participatory notes so these are used by foreign investors who do not want to come to the fore so it's unknown that who is the actual investor so these are hedge funds they invest in indian securities but not directly so fii's foreign institutional investors are registered under sebi and allowed to invest in the indian markets but then the p notes are investing in fii so they are through the fii's they are functioning in the country so this p notes can also come under gar so that is also a fear which is there so fii's when they are investing in the indian stock market on behalf of p notes any benefit which is accruing to them any capital gains which occur here they are sent back to the p notes they are overseas investors p notes are overseas investors so here also if there is any capital gains and tax is not been paid to india so then p notes become under the purview under gar so that is also a fear so once it comes into effect and government provides more clarification we'll get more details regarding to this too so this is the p note holder based in another country so this is p notes issuer 
who is an FII who is allowed you know function here so this is the transaction which is taking place here a contractor is investing in India through P notes and then this is investing in Indian equities so trade securities in India investment is taking place here so GAR is applicable on all these transactions but here GAR application is questionable so this is within India and then it all goes outside India P notes outside India so how will the taxation take place under GAR with this two has to be seen so these are the news items for today thank you